Hello viewers, I've decided to do a video on my recollections from Ministerial Training School, MTS, which is currently known as the Bible School for Single Brothers, but which will shortly be dispensed with entirely in favour of, I believe it's now called the Kingdom, the School for Kingdom Evangelizers. It's basically not MTS anymore, uh, it's not the same school that I went to, or it won't be whenever it begins. I just want to go through some of my memories from Ministerial Training School just to give you a flavour of what it was like. And what one of the things I, I was thinking about doing was kind of giving like some highlights of some of the most outrageous stuff that was said during the school. But let me show you why I'm not going to do that. This is my um, folder, my MTS folder and you can see that there's quite a lot of hang on quite a lot of pages um it was a two month course and for every on every day there were four different lessons and for every lesson i was sat there taking these notes and for me to literally wade through two months worth of lessons and just to pick out a few highlights would be like an epic job in itself so I've decided that instead of doing that I'm just going to focus on my general um, feelings about the course and what kind of really stood out to me and then if I think of anything else in the future I can I can maybe bring it up in another video now I should perhaps explain that my MTS was, for me, a very emotional experience because my mother died four years before I went to MTS and it was during our final conversations together she made it very clear that she wanted me to go to MTS and she even said that in the resurrection, when, when we were reunited in the resurrection, because she knew she was going to die, she said that she wanted to watch a, a video of my MTS graduation. And obviously MTS graduations aren't to be recorded or filmed. So what I thought was, well, the next best thing is for me to do like a DVD of the course. So I, I started off doing like a video diary of MTS while I was there, specifically so I could have something to show my mother when we in the resurrection it sounds crazy but <clears throat> that's you know that's how i felt at the time and i had some help from other uh, classmates and what we ended up doing was producing um a dvd uh, called mts 29 because it, our class was the 29th class in Britain of the ministerial twin, uh, of the min ministerial training school, so we we made this DVD, um, and it's <laughs> I, I don't want to show. I, I've decided. I've thought, given it a lot of thought, and I've decided I'm not going to show this DVD in its entirety or hardly at all because. I don't think it's fair to the classmate, my classmates who, who are on there. I can imagine if I was in their shoes, <clears throat> not feeling the way they feel and seeing themselves on YouTube on a so-called apostate channel, I can imagine them being absolutely mortified and, and it, it would perhaps hinder them from waking up in the future. So I've decided I'm not gonna show any clips in which they feature. But I do just want to show you a clip that was showing me just bef just after I'd arrived at Ministerial Training School and you can kind of see how excited I am uh, and it just kind of shows you what my initial impressions were of the class. Let me just warn you that uh, before I show you the clip that, that we put some soundtrack onto the DVD and the soundtrack is a little bit high uh, quite loud so what I'll do is I'll put subtitles on so you can hear what I'm saying so apologies for the loud soundtrack well it's day two April the 7th um, we had our first registration day today and uh, we 
got to get a taste for what's to come in the next eight weeks. We will give them uh, this Ministerial Training School student manual, which is essentially ma mostly made up of references that we have to look up and uh, research three hours of every night for the next day's lessons. So we've got a taste of how um, in-depth the course is and how, how hard it's going to be. But uh, we also got to meet everybody else in the class and we also got to meet the uh, MTS uh, operating committee and the work assigners who will be giving us tasks around the assembly hall. And we were given a tour of the assembly hall. Uh, it's an incredible building. I must just say it's quite creepy seeing myself so young and uh, naive and uh, fresh-faced uh, and probably it's weird for you comparing comparing me now. Um, but yeah, that, that was me just after I'd arrived on the course, just after we, I'd had the first registration day and there were two registration days on the Thursday and Friday when you first arrived just to kind of acclimatise you to to the setup and then you had these eight weeks of lessons uh, and the lessons were dictated by the ministerial training school manual which is what you saw in that brief clip and the manual didn't contain any real kind of uh, information all it really was was the um, basically the layout of the lessons so this lesson's going to be dealing with this subject, this lesson's going to be dealing with this subject, and underneath each uh, subject was the references. And the references were basically reams and reams of references from Watchtower Publications. And it was the responsibility of each student to, on the evening before each, each day's lessons, to do three hours of homework. And the way they said it was, well, it should be 45 minutes per lesson. So four sessions of 45 minutes of preparation for, for, each, for the next day's lessons. And some of these lessons were basically, they would give you like two or three Watchtower articles to read for one lesson. So you can imagine how much reading that was. It was just, and, and they, they, one of the things they said you needed to do was speed read. You needed to be able to scan through the material. And um, I will admit that that is kind of a, a skill that I learned while I was on ministerial training school. And it's something that stayed with me even now when I'm preparing my articles for GW survey. Um, and I'm maybe reading a, a Watchtower article that's just come out. I am actually able to kind of scan through it and look out for key words it's strange but what this routine meant was that the students were completely you know drained and exhausted because you had a full day you had to be at the um school for around seven in the morning i think it was about seven and you would stay there until maybe half past five and then you would go home have your dinner and then you would have this three hours of homework to do and on top of that three hours of homework, you would need to prepare any talks or, or items that you had been uh, scheduled to give the next day. So it was very, very draining. And I want to show you uh, a video from a few days later just to show you kind of the impact it's had on me. It's getting pretty difficult. Uh, this is obviously Wednesday today and we've had uh, two days prior, but I think today some of the stuff that we're doing is very very intense but it's more the amount of studying that we're having to do just can't keep up with it and uh, when we're going through the material in the lessons quite often we just haven't been able to get around to that part of the homework assignment but it doesn't really matter a huge amount because we can still write down in our notes what is discussed the instructors always bring the points out that we need to remember, so from that point of view it's quite good. It's just, um, it feels very much like uh, you come home, we study, we go to bed, and then, you know, the next thing we know we're waking up and rushing into, into the classes, so it's a very um, relentless routine, which hopefully soon we'll all get used to. 
so there's one or two things that are starting to uh, wear, wear me, but um, I'm hoping that I'll get used to it all, I'm sure I will. So yes, by that point, some of that, um, you can probably see some of that enthusiasm had maybe waned a little bit. Um, but I would have to say that although I kind of hit like a wall after the first or second week, it does get easier after that. You do kind of start to get into the routine. You become acclimatised to the amount of work you're being asked to do and you find your own rhythm. Like in my own, in my own case, I decided that I absolutely refused to do three hours of homework and I, I cut that down to two hours so that I would have more time to spend on my on preparing for my talks and that kind of thing. And just little things like that helped me to find my own rhythm and, and make it through the course. But I want to talk a little bit more about you know some of the things that happened during the course. And one of the things that kind of really stood out was uh, when a fellow student of mine uh, he's actually a member of our car party, uh, made the mistake of getting involved in a relationship while he was on the ministerial training school. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you don't need me to tell you that this was would be like a huge taboo. Uh, in fact, you know, not long before my ministerial training school, there was a rule in force which insisted that you weren't allowed to uh, get married for I think it was a year after the course uh, but they actually lifted that by the time it was my time for my uh, MTS because they said well that's effectively celibacy and celibacy is a Catholic thing so but the, you definitely weren't allowed to be in a relationship when you actually came to the course so for this lad to be kind of starting a relationship I think it was a relative um, of the family that he was rooming with uh, <laughs> was like a huge no-no and what amazed me was the way that the instructor deal, uh, dealt with the situation sorry he basically um it was it was towards the end of of the day in fact we were just we'd finished our final lesson and we were packing away our books into our bags the whole kind of class was there we were the, the lesson was over but we were all still in the classroom and the instructor, it was an older guy, one of the earliest um, MTS instructors in the UK, came marching over to this young lad who was in our car party. So we knew a little bit about what was happening and started remonstrating with him. Um, not kind of really loudly or angrily, but, you know, basically started talking to him about this relationship in front of everybody while we were all still there in the classroom. And telling him how he, you know, it was unacceptable, and he was here to to learn and not to be in a relationship. So I thought that was very odd. You know, he, this instructor had his own office that he could have said, "Do you mind if we just step aside for one moment and have a conversation?" Um, but to do to to deal with this situation while we're all still there within earshot, I found that very very peculiar. There was another very strange lesson which I, I still can't quite get my head around when I think about it. But we were basically told during the lesson, we, we had our insight volumes on our desks along with a number of other publications that we needed to have with us at all times. And we were discussing something to do with the temple in Jerusalem. And we had our, our books open and the instructor said, uh, at this point, I need to ask you to um, delete one of the sentences in the inside book. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and I think it surprised pretty much everyone because if there's one thing that you don't do, you don't delete stuff in the publications, or at least back then you didn't. I know since then there's been changes to the revelation book and that kind of thing. But I can even show you, here's my dusty old insight book. And you can see on page 1000, 1081, that's the part there that was we had to put a line through. And the, there was a reference given, which was uh, Watchtower 2002, May the 1st, pages 30 and 31, which I think was a question from readers explaining why something to do with their understanding of the temple uh, their previous understanding had now changed, something to do with the fact that um, the temple in question had been built by Herod and therefore shouldn't be taken as being having anything to do with 
spiritual things. So I don't remember what the exact reasons were, but it just amazed me at the time that we were being asked to draw a line through, you know, material that had been given to us by the faithful and discreet slave. And um, I, I, that was one thing that really hit home to me. One of the things I really enjoyed about the course was the camaraderie that built up between the students and in fact to this day when I was watching my MTS DVD kind of trying to get in the mood for this video um, I could feel the emotions because these were kind of brothers in arms this was an experience that we shared together uh, we came through it together and uh, I, I still look back with fondness in a way on that whole experience because it was you know something quite remarkable um, you, I guess you have to go through it to, to know what it's like and I still kind of feel fondness for for the guys that that we uh, that I studied with but one interesting byproduct of having 22 young guys in a class together is that there was inevitably horseplay and there was kind of jokes and I tended to be if not at the center of all that I tended to be kind of around the periphery of, of the jokes that were going on and there was a couple of stories I wanted to tell you the first was what well, I think it was one evening when I was doing my homework I I had a phone call from one of the other students and he said um, we're thinking of playing a joke do you want to be involved and I was, I was thinking about it and I said, no, I'd actually rather not be involved because I don't want to kind of, I don't want to get myself in too much trouble. But, you know, good luck sort of thing. Go for it. And I think it was the next day or the day after, um, I, I was outside because we had these work assignments that we needed to do um, every day. So instead of having just a normal lunch break, we would be asked to do work, like practical work, outside in the grounds of the assembly hall or inside doing cleaning or whatever and this very kind of angry student came marching up to me and he was Scottish so here's my Scottish accent he said have you put soapy stuff in my boots <laughs> I was like what and he said have you put soapy stuff in my boots <laughs> and he just the translation he was saying have you put soapy stuff in my boots I said, no, no, I haven't. Have you put soapy stuff in my boots? And I said, no, no, I haven't. And he was convinced it was me that had done it. And what had happened was uh, this lad who called me up had um, taken a load of paper napkins, put um, hand soap on them and stuffed them inside this guy's work boots, which were like these immaculate riggers that we were all very jealous of. <laughs> and he put this... Um, this kind of congealed mess of paper and soap in this guy's boots and I could understand him being irate about it but he picked the wrong guy and he came straight for me because he thought I was the one that had done it but uh, I hadn't and there was another uh, funny experience involving the same person and probably you're gathering by now that that this particular Scottish chap wasn't kind of the most liked person on the course in fact he was probably the only one on the course that wasn't universally, um, wasn't like warmed to by everyone. And there was a really funny experience that happened one Friday evening. And just to give you a bit of background, on Friday evenings there was kind of, um, because of the schedule, there was kind of a gap where students were kind of milling around without much to do for a period between the lessons ending, having our, having our dinner, which was like a buffet, and then we had like an hour to kill before we had our meeting that evening. So what we had was this thing called the, the Untheocratic Ministry School, where we would all kind of assemble in the main auditorium of this assembly hall where our MTS was, which was Dudley Assembly Hall. So there we all would be in the main auditorium. We would each take it in turns to stand on the platform of this huge auditorium and practice it, it was all kind of supposed to be to practice our projection to practice our speaking our public speaking but it inevitably descended into just you know basically making fun of of the uh, of the whole thing and um behind the platform 
I found this kind of um, walkie-talkie kind of device and it was screwed to the wall and when you pulled when you pulled off the walkie-talkie device and spoke into it your voice boomed around the uh, auditorium and I think it I think it had emergency tannoy written on it or something so I thought it'd be hilarious to just play some ringtones bear in mind this was back in uh, 2005 so we didn't have like amazing ringtones back then but I did have some funny ones I had the A-Team soundtrack that the A-Team theme sorry and the theme from Father Ted which is a, a British um, uh, sitcom and I, I played the theme tunes for these two um, TV programs through the emergency tannoy thinking that it was just gonna come through in the auditorium for everyone was there but what I didn't realize <laughs> what I didn't realize was that the emergency tannoy wasn't just for the auditorium it was for every single room in the entire building including the instructors offices <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, anyway this Scottish guy immediately afterwards comes running up to me and, and remonstrating with me in front of everyone, saying that I, you know, I was not taking it seriously enough. How dare I be so disrespectful? And I should, you know, take a look at myself. And basically counselling me because he was an elder and I was a ministerial servant. He was basically counselling me in front of everybody. But the funny thing was that the next day I was due to have a a personal one-on-one -on -one, um, discussion with one of our instructors. And I'd already there were two, we had two instructors, and I call I kind of called them or or thought of them as kind of good cop bad cop because there was like one instructor who you who you really felt a natural warmth to, and the other instructor who was the older one who was the same one that um, remonstrated with my classmate over his relationship, and he was kind of an older you know less diplomatic one didn't exactly tried to build any kind of relationship with his, with the students and it was this instructor that I knew I had a personal one-on-one one -on -one with the very next day from the emergency tannoy incident <laughs> so I was basically I knew I was in trouble and I thought okay how do I get out of this one and I thought well what I'll do is I'll just basically berate myself over it and hope that he goes easy on me and sure enough um, this instructor said so um, how, how do you how do you feel you're you're doing on on the course how would you describe you know the way you're 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 behaving on the course or something like that and I said well I'm glad you've mentioned that because I feel as though my behavior has been unacceptable I feel as though I'm um, acting in, in, in too boisterous a manner and not taking things seriously enough and I'm allowing myself to get carried away and, and not being serious and I really feel as though I need to kind of knuckle down and, and start acting a little bit more sensibly and I was just basically carrying on like this for like a couple of minutes and af after all of that the instructor was like yes 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 you should okay anyway <laughs> we carried on and it never got mentioned i never got um told off for the emergency tannoy incident only by one of my fellow students so to this day i can't quite figure out how i got away with it but there we go so gradually we managed to get through the course and um it, it's difficult for me to kind of look on the actual information itself and say oh I learned something from it I, I feel as though I have a good insight into what Jehovah's Witness teachings are that I can use in my work on JW survey but when I look back through my notes I don't feel as though it was a truly enlightening experience it was just a case of this is what Watchtower believes and this is what you should believe so finally, kind of as, as the course went on, we we came to our graduation, and at the graduation, I was given a diploma which I wanted to show you. Now I'm putting a piece of paper over my name because, as many of you know, I don't kind of um, give out my real name because. 
basically because I need it in order to make a living and provide for my family but my readers and people who know me know my work online basically are only interested for pure curiosity so I'm, I hope you don't mind if I um, if I cover over my name but here is my diploma that I received and at the bottom you'll see two signatures one is Peter Ellis and the other is Stephen Hardy both of whom are on the um, the Britain branch I think they're still serving on the Britain branch and I wanted to read you the certificate because I think the wording is very interesting it says certificate ministerial training school hereby be it known that and then my name uh, an ordained minister of the gospel has shown himself qualified to engage in educational activity promoting goodwill and working in behalf of permanent peace and the law of perfect order and righteousness weird stuff among all peoples he is specifically recommended for service listen to this he is specifically recommended for service as a representative of the International Bible Students Association and its associate corporation Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain to co-labour with them in preaching the good news of Jehovah God's Kingdom by Christ Jesus. Issued at Dudley, England, June 5th, 2005. And I just find it kind of interesting that there isn't any small print here. It says that I am a representative of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain and there's no caveat that says if he's ever if he ever disassociates himself or or starts talking in apostate terms he's no longer a representative as far as at least as far as this certificate is concerned I am a representative of the Watchtower Society so I don't want to go on about that because I know it's just you know it's semantics but I just thought it might be interesting. Two other things I wanted to mention before I leave you. Uh, and one of those things is that I actually left my job to go to the ministerial training school. And I wasn't the only one. There were others on my course that did that. And looking back, that was a hugely reckless thing for me to do. Um, I actually don't regret doing it in a funny way because I ended up... Um, I ended up meeting my wife as a result of going to ministerial training school so in a, in a funny way it worked out for me I actually while I was when it was coming to the final two weeks of my course I rang up my one of my previous bosses and basically pleaded with him to have my job back and fortunately he agreed to, to let me have my job back so I was okay but others aren't so fortunate and um, in fact my own father he went to ministerial training school in 2011 uh, so he decided it was something he wanted to do as well and when he got his invitation through he asked his employers um, if for the time off for the two months off and obviously they said no and he left he he said right and he, he quit his job over it and that was in 2011 and he still hasn't got uh, a job so you know it works out for me but it doesn't work out for everyone is what I'm saying and another interesting thing about my dad's MTS was I went to his graduation in 2011 uh, by this time I'd obviously woken up so it was quite a strange experience for me to be sat in the audience at, at this uh, event and one of the things that was very interesting was that the class read out a letter of thanks to the governing body and this wasn't something that we did at our um, graduation. I remember we wrote a letter to the to thank the families who'd given us accommodation and who'd helped out on the course. And we also had a class resolution that we that we read out. But that I remember nothing about there being a letter of thanks to the governing body. And the interesting thing about this, of course, is that it's the governing body the governing body's teaching committee that sets out the ministerial training school course or the Bible school for single brothers if you want to call it that so essentially the governing body were asking the students to thank them which make of that what you will but I would suggest that's an extremely 
egotistical thing for them to do. So my battery's running out now and I probably said all the most interesting things that happened on the course. If I think of anything else or if I find anything in my notes I can always make a kind of update video in the future but I just wanted to show share those few things with you and hope you find them interesting and uh, yeah thank you for watching.